Welcome back to another Homebrew Space Marine chapter conversion video. Another one of my viewers recently got in touch with me with a commission for a chapter master for their own homebrew chapter, which I thought would make for an interesting conversion guide. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to build the chapter master Carnus of the Nephilim. Now, the basis for this conversion was the Corsero Khan kit, which was an interesting choice on my behalf, considering that the progenitors of the Nephilim are in fact the Blood Angels. But there are a few aspects of the model that reflect to the chapter, which I felt made it a good option. So I cracked open the box and began removing the components required to build the torso, legs and left arm of the model before cleaning up the mold lines and the sprue contact points. The first task was to strip away all of the white scar lightning bolt symbols that were scattered across the model. The Nephilim are a Blood Angel successor, so unless it's a blood drop, it was getting removed. The first area that I tackled was the chest. This had the top of a very small lightning bolt protruding just above the cord. With the tip of my scalpel, I very carefully trimmed this away. I made small incremental cuts, which allowed me to slowly shave it away whilst avoiding damage to the wings or the gorget. With the chest cleaned up, the same treatment was performed on the knee pad and also the belt. These were a little easy to remove and simply involved shaving off the symbol before smoothing the surface flat afterwards. It was easier to perform the step before I began assembling any components together. It generally makes it easier to hold the components without damaging parts of the kit and also means that I can more easily reach the areas with my knife. With the belt symbol removed, I could make some further modifications. Whilst the rounded discs of the belt armor were quite distinctly influenced by medieval Mongolians, as are other aspects of the white scars, I ultimately decided to retain them. These discs also feature in some Eastern European cultures, something that I felt that the Blood Angel aspects of them would complement. So I began to remove the more white scars inspired pieces, such as the tassels. These were first clipped away and retained for my bits box before having their contact points cleaned up. Unfortunately, a problem occurred when I compared the belt against the torso. I could see that there was now a visible indentation in the groinal armor, which needed to be fixed. So I grabbed my tube of perfect plastic putty, squeezed out a small amount and pressed this into the indentation. After wetting the tool, I was then able to smooth out the surface, although I wasn't too worried about getting things perfect just yet. Once I was happy that the dent had been filled, I left the putty to dry for a few hours. After being allowed to dry, I started to smooth out the putty so that it sat flush against the armor. Using a knife or a file for this is pretty easy as the putty can be sanded down really nicely. I also took this opportunity to clean up any overspills here too. With the symbols removed, the tassel clipped away and the gap in the cod piece filled, I was then able to glue the belt and the legs to the torso. Another reason that I chose this particular model for a basis as the conversion was Cossero's outstretched right arm. Normally the model will be carrying a large hawk, but I wanted to replace this with a Volkite pistol. This ancient tech is a nod to just how old this particular chapter master, known as Carnus, actually is. Carnus and his brothers hail from the time of the Horus Heresy, but at the height of civil war, he and a small band of blood angels were tasked with protecting a highly secretive Terminator project. Fearing it would fall into the hands of the encroaching traitors, a small group begrudgingly made an attempt to escape, only to become lost and stranded within the war. Now this pistol was taken from the Blade God Lieutenant set, but the elbow and forearm needed to be liberated from the shoulder. So I began by sawing through the plastic, positioning the saw just above the elbow to maintain as much of it as possible. Once the forearm has been removed from the shoulder, I cleaned up the cut with my knife. At this point, I had the Volkite pistol arm, but it wouldn't quite fit against the upper arm just yet. Therefore, I needed to start making some cuts to the top of the elbow armor. I did these bit by bit, checking against the shoulder pad frequently to make sure that I wasn't removing too much or cutting in the wrong place. Once I was happy that the forearm was fitting against the upper arm, I was able to glue it into place. With the right arm and torso adjustments made, I was able to attach the rear of the torso to the rest of the model, which included the fur-colored cape. 
Now this fitted perfectly with Carnus's background. After being lost to the warp for nearly 10 millennia, Carnus and the small band of Blood Angels returned upon the opening of the Great Rift, with barely any time having passed for them. Having been discovered by Call, Carnus was informed about what had happened to his Primarch. The weight of this revelation lay heavily upon Carnus, causing an immense guilt upon him and his brethren. As such, he, along with the newly formed Nephilim, now wear the black dappled pelt of the Carnodons to remind them of their perceived abandonment of their Primarch. The Nephilim are expert swordsmen and prefer to engage at close range. Luckily, Corsero's Kong sword was already perfect for this and just needed a little adjustment. With my knife, I carefully shaved away the distinctly white scars style horse motif from the sword's pommel, running it out to be a much more simpler design. With this done, I was then able to attach the left arm to the torso. With the left arm in place, I was able to attach the shoulder pad to it. Now instead of using the white scar and blazing pad from the original kit, I wanted something a little more generic, and so chose a pad from the Intercessor kit. However, there were two problems with this particular pad that needed to both be addressed. The first was that the cord that held the smaller quealer was a little too raised to sit properly beneath the fur coat, so this needed to be trimmed back. I started with a few small cuts to the right side of the cord to help flatten it out. I then checked the fit to see how much more I needed to remove. I continued with the cuts until the pad could fit snugly beneath the cape, and with this, I glued it into place. The second problem with the pad was that it didn't have the small tuft of fur sculpted onto it. This meant that the fur mantle had an abrupt stop just above the pad. It wasn't really an easy way to remove this without damaging the original component, so I decided to sculpt my own. I first grabbed myself some Procreate. It's basically green stuff, but I find it less tacky and so it's a little easier to work with. I cut a small amount of each of the two colored halves before mixing them together until I had a solid gray. From this mixture, I rolled out a small sphere before flattening it out a little and then cutting out a roughly triangular shape that was no more than five millimeters long at any one side. Keeping my tools damp throughout this process stopped the putty from sticking to them and allowed me to position it into the shoulder pad. I squashed it down a little more before using my scalpel to scour a series of irregular lines that followed a similar rough direction, originating at the top of the shoulder pad before moving down towards the bottom. I continued to make a series of crisscrossing lines, carefully pulling up small tufts of the putty to emulate the rest of the fur on the model. The result didn't need to be perfect, just enough to help it to blend in a little more with the rest of the fur. Once I had finished, I left the putty to harden for several hours so that I didn't accidentally damage it as I worked on the rest of the model. With the shoulder pads in place, I could then attach the small brooch from the kit before taking one of the blood drop trinkets from the Primer's Blood Angels upgrade kit. This small blood symbol helps to tie this chapter into its Blood Angels origins and was simply glued to the waist. Now even though Carnus and the small group of Space Marines that accompanied were Blood Angels, they were not reintegrated into the rest of their chapter. Instead, Cole offered to assist Carnus and his men in crossing the Rubicon Primaris. Upon completion of this procedure, Carnus's forces were bolstered with Primaris drawn from the ranks of the Unnumbered Sons. As so, Carnus was reborn as Chapter Master of the Nephilim. For such a prestigious rank, I needed to find a head that matched. Tapping into that Blood Angels theme, once again, I took on a death mask from the Sanguinary Guard kit. This was perfect because it had ties to the Blood Angels, but also the small teardrop below the right eye also reflected the Nephilim's guilt for not being at Sanguinus' side when he met his demise. The only problem with this head was that the halo didn't quite fit inside of the fur-lined collar. To resolve this, I clipped off the bottom strut from each side before trimming and cleaning up. This left me with a much better fit. However, I planned to paint this separately, so I wasn't going to glue this on just yet. For the backpack, instead of butchering coarse arrows, I instead took a generic backpack from an intercessor. This fitted perfectly without any additional adjustment and meant that I had a great white skull component left intact to use in the future. 
The final step in building Cornus was to alter what he was resting his foot upon. The kit comes with a large rock with a horse engraved into it. Again, this wouldn't fit in with this model's new purpose, so needed to be replaced. I began by clipping away the tab from beneath the foot and then smoothing it flat. To replace the rock, I instead chose to use a spare tank hatch from an Imperial Guard vehicle kit to represent some generic battlefield debris. Part of the locking mechanism from beneath the hatch needed to be removed, but this left me with a good height to rest Karnas' raised foot on. And with that, all I needed to do was to paint and base the model, which left me with this. And here we have the completed Chapter Master Karnas of the homebrew chapter, the Nephilim. The chapter colours are predominantly a dark red with accents of black, silver and white which I recreated on this model, with the stark white creating a very strong contrast against the dark red of the armour. Once again it was great to have a chance to tackle another homebrew chapter and I am incredibly happy with the result. Using a distinctly white scars miniature as the basis for this conversion was a little trickier than using a more generic model, but the result was a much more impressively posed miniature. And so, as always, I just want to say a big thank you to all my supporters and the folks who use my affiliate links. If you would like to help me out with making these videos, you can do so at Buy Me A Coffee or on Patreon, which you can find links to in the description below. Your help is always greatly appreciated, and if you like this video, then check out my other conversion guides, and please do consider subscribing. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.